Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our podcast, Beneath Your Skin. This is Gaia. People are telling me that we are back to normality, but I don't believe them. And so I'm very salty. Hello, my dear. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I think I'm as salty as you. I'm, I don't believe there is any such thing as normal anymore, but, you know, surviving life. Surviving life is probably easier than surviving the series of movies we are watching lately. Oh, 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 this one's so bad. Today, we are going to talk about a movie called uh, The Exorcism of Karen Walker. People, let me tell you, it's basically impossible to find it. If you have it on uh, Amazon or Prime, don't click on it. If you are wondering why, you just have to listen to me and Zoe being so salty and so pissed off about it that you will know exactly why <laughs> you should never watch it. So <sighs> let's start with uh, um, something that is never good for uh, a horror movie. It's so damn slow. Oh. And uh, it leads you step by step, explaining to you everything, even what you are perfectly able to watch and understand alone. All the characters are impossible to like, but one, she was my favorite character and she died, of course, so I really should stop liking characters. We already said that, but this is the, the proof that we were right. And what really pisses me off is that, uh, in many ways, this movie had uh, the possibility to be a good one. Uh, not just because of the scary pictures or the, the camera able to represent people or us, but because, for once, we had the psychic character who was the one you really liked. She wasn't scum. She wasn't a fraud. She knew what she was doing. On the other side, have another female character that you want to, to see that since the first scene, the mother. Oh my uh. God, the mother. The <laughs> mother was so impossible to like. You yeah. just wanted to get rid of her since the beginning. The mother is this very hardcore Catholic woman who prefer to believe that uh, her brother raped or abused her, her daughter, her younger child, than to believe, than to listen to him telling her that there was something inside her. And it wasn't his cock. Literally, <laughs> it wasn't his cock. At the beginning, when she explained to, to the older son well, what happened when they were children and why Karen is uh, so sick and so unwell and why she never spoke to her brother again, we can almost believe it could, be, it could have been a possibility that this man who lived alone in a huge house abused her somehow, even because the movie opens with uh, um, this adult man tying this child to a chair to take pictures. It sounds creepy. It sounds like something that could even be related to pedophilia and uh, things like that. But no, it wasn't anything like that. It was just that uh, the, the mother is an hardcore Catholic and the brother was uh, a psychic. So, of course, uh, since the beginning, they couldn't get along. Uh, and as soon as the, the mother had the one good reason to accuse him of everything terrible in the world she did. And you really dislike her even when she talks because you can see this woman could have been one who um, accused innocent people of being witches in another era. She could have been one who would have sold her own brother to the Spanish Inquisition, for example, if she was born in that time. And yeah, really, you don't like her because she used guilty 
to manipulate her son without telling anyone she put Karen into an a mental facility. She was never she was never committed there. She was put there by her own mother. And when we see Karen for the first time, we realize, okay, lady, uh, you realize that perhaps she could have used another kind of help because she's not doing too well. And we know she's in that state more or less uh, for the past 30 years. For a mother who loves so much her children, who prays for them every night and blah, 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 you weren't really a good mother to Karen. Mm. But really, so slow. Oh. And then every, every arc of narration that they opened, it stays open because they can't finish a single one of them. So we have an horrible mother. Nothing happens to her. You could at least expect Mitch, the son, to go against her, mad for what she did to to Karen, no, absolutely. We find out she uh, put her daughter into the mental facility, and the only thing that he does is uh, to tell his wife not to call her, don't tell her that Karen is here in the house. Oh, that's it, really? Then we have Diane, Diane, who is pregnant and who already had an abortion, no, a miscarriage, a miscarriage, miscarriage yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I always forget that in English you have two words to indicate two different kind of. We only have one. Interesting. Well, and yeah. yeah, indeed, indeed. I think, in truth, given that those are two very different things, yeah, we should we should have two words. But yeah, yeah, because one is a choice oh. and one is not. Exactly, and sometimes uh, Italian betrays you like that. But hey. And uh, yes, so she got uh, a miscarriage and uh, she's still traumatized by it. So now she's very worried that something can go wrong with this new pregnancy. And the only thing that was asked from Diane was not to go into the basement. Of course, <laughs> she does. But... We only see in the end what we already imagined as soon as Ada would have started talking about uh, the, this entity choosing the most innocent and younger soul in the house, we knew yeah. what was going to happen. And of course, it, it, it does happen. Yeah, yeah, you, you guessed it right. So uh, oh. Mitch is a, an unfinished arc of narration. Uh, Karen is an unfinished arc of narration because basically she was just there because she was the younger one, not because she was important somehow or because uh, any other reason. She was just the most innocent. Hmm. Uh, the mother I already said about her. The only arc of narration that is uh, concluded is uh, Ada's because she dies, so <laughs> we know. But at least we know it. A bit of her background story. We realize she knew uh, the uncle. We realize, no, we, we don't realize because she tell us, but at least we find out that uh, she was in the house when the, the entity was called, because yes, it was called, and it got very mad. And it didn't leave because people who were supposed to do that for a job, couldn't finish the ritual because they got too scared. And you are wondering, and why the hell did you spend your life being a psychic if you get scared about entities? And above all, about one entity you called there because you wanted to have proof of their existence and you wanted to validate the whole category with that one picture. Yeah, great job. It always <laughs> ends well. But yes, people, it's so slow. And then the the main plot line, the one with Karen and Mitch and the mother, it, it, it's so full of plot holes and cliche that at some point you are just there because you are too weak to get up and go doing anything else but watching this movie. 
So yes, it wasn't a good movie. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't even an interesting one. Nope. The only good character was Ada. What really pisses me off, as I said, is that for once we could have had a different point of view. We could have had the religion showed as closed-minded and uh, unable to do anything, and the psychic with a solid plan and being the voice of reason and logic, but no, no, absolutely not. The only good thing of this movie was the uh, opening credits. Yes. Because throw tarots and pictures and uh, other small details, they told us a story that it was a lot more interesting than the movie itself. They told you the connection between tarots and souls, life and death, and above all, how through pictures you could doom or save a soul. And that would have been a more interest movie, interesting movie than this one, believe me. Anything could have been a more interesting movie than this one. This was so damn boring. So I was sitting on my sofa and then I was lying on my sofa and then, you know, I was trying to convince my cat it wanted to play with me because I was just like, I need something to distract me. This is so boring. I'm going to go back to sleep. And even my cat was like, no, this is boring. I'm going to go sleep in a box. And I'm like, no, don't desert me. The thing is, is like when it first started, it was like some creepy ideas put in your head. Those opening credits I was enjoying because I love seeing story through nothing but images. And I love seeing those old fashioned like religious texts and religious symbolisms and old like looking scriptures and papers and books. And it gives things like this feeling of like there is history in here. There is mythology here. There is research here. Then it started and the characters opened their mouths and I was like, oh, no, they can't act. All the delivery is very stilted, very like, did you just literally read that and then do the first take of you saying that? And it's just like, oh, honey, this is our new house. Oh, it's not as creepy as your mum said. What do you think of the house? Oh, I love it. Oh, no, your mother is calling. Oh, I'm so sorry she called. Don't pick up a box. Hi, mum. Oh, you shouldn't be in that house. It's evil. It's not a good house. I'll be fine. It was too expensive in the city. And it just went on like this. Then you hear a, ah, oh no, wife. Why did you pick up the box? Ow, I'm pregnant and it hurts. And it's just like, oh my God, you can't act. And you're literally like just narrating this entire story to me. You don't need, in this day and age, you don't need to go, to, like tell a pregnant person not to pick up a box it's kind of like you know if you see boxes in a pregnant person you sh they shouldn't really be lifting that load but you know in a horror movie or they're going to pick it up but you don't need to have a whole dialogue about don't pick up the boxes oh no you picked up the box oh it's going to hurt the baby oh look what happens it's hurt the baby oh no you've got low oh blah blah and i'm like shut up and then we're half an hour into the movie and i'm like there's not even a haunting going on there's oh we found a camera. Here is a creepy picture. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. More pointlessness. More pointlessness. More nothing. More me wanting to play with the cat. Oh, yes. Your sister was sent to an insane asylum. When was the last time you visited your sister? About a year ago. And you call yourself her brother? Oh, I can't believe you would just abandon your sister. Well, have you gone to visit her? I don't have a car. Well, shut up. You've lost all footing and respect. You haven't done anything yourself. He's got some good reasons too. His car barely works. His wife is pregnant, stroke having miscarriages, stroke getting pregnant again. I lost it a bit there. And I couldn't tell if like, he, did they lose the three month old baby and then she get pregnant straight away? Or did they have a miscarriage and then it was just the scare when she fell over on her owie tummy? And it was just like, I'm so confused. I don't care. <laughs> And then we go and say Karen is like, hey, this is Karen. Oh, she doesn't look good. No. Oh, this is strange. She's only here because your mum told her to. I could take her home. Yes. Here you go. Take this deranged woman home with no medication, no aftercare, no knowledge of her condition. Oh, she's going to live in your basement. Cool. Don't go in the basement. There's a 
woman with severe mental health problems who's probably got severe like anxiety, depression, doesn't know how to socially interact if she's been in the freaking mental asylum by herself in isolation for like 13 odd years. Oh, well, I'm sure I'll be fine. And then the, the wife is like, I don't like Karen being here. She's and I, and I keep thinking of like that people are using the slang term for Karen as something I can't re- I don't really know the urban dictionary of it but it's like stop being such a Karen so when they keep going I don't like Karen why is Karen here and I'm like is this a metaphor for the internet and the fact that people don't like Karen in their internet and it was just like it's like if you look at it like that it's like oh yeah Karen just complains and you know that's what a Karen does and I'm like well in Karen's defense in the movie she is possessed and basically just likes to swear that's about the all the the demonic entity does i don't remember it doing anything more impressive than swearing and shouting oh oh no it did do some weird wind machine gas burp at one point oh wind machine gas burp oh that's so terrifying oh and especially since he's going oh he's covering his face so i'm like are you covering your face because you smell or are you shocked because i'm not entirely sure and i think I think it smelled. Okay. I think that was the only possible explanation yeah. because a man doesn't show shock like that. Yeah, At like... least not in a horror movie. No. You are not a Victorian yeah. hero. Fop. You're like, oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you are. oh no, how dare you burp? So yeah, oh. the evil demon burps. And that's that's it. That that was about it. And there was a bit when they were like, "No, Karen!" And it was delivered in such a hilarious style that me and my husband just started shouting, "No, Karen! Don't, Karen!" at each other because that's all the ending with the actual exorcism. It's just like, "No, Karen! Stop, Karen!" And we so yeah, we just thought that was really funny and just kept shouting, "No, Karen! Stop, Karen!" at each other for a bit. So yeah, and then I don't know. I just was so bored by the end. I was like, oh. Oh, did they? Oh, they got the demon out. The demon that loves sweet, innocent souls and will go after the the youngest, most innocent, most pure soul. Why did you invite your pregnant wife to an exorcism of a soul-loving, innocent, eating, big demon thing? Because you know, oh, so when the picture reveal at the end, oh no, twist! Just like, well, of course it was going to go, yeah, why would I be in this 20-year-old woman when I could be in this three-month-old like month old fetus and have a jolly old time? Demon babies, whoop! Stupid, so stupid, so boring. And yeah. in the end, Ada is even dead, so there is no one, no one else left to, to save the child, at least I hope so, because if someone has the great idea to make a movie in which... Mitch is going to look for the other three idiots involved in the first experiment of calling the entity inside the house to take the picture. I'm going to kill someone. There so, is no way in hell they make it. It was hard enough of finding this one. And we should have left it in the graveyard of bad movies where I found it. Yeah. Yeah. But we are not that smart. We realize that when we see a ve- what looks like a very bad movie... We need to watch it for science. Yes. We need to warn people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, We are doing this for you. Yes. So, please. Just like the exorcist we love. Listen to us. When we tell you not to watch something, listen to us. Because it means we already lost some brain cell. Yeah. Because of, say, the movie. So, yeah. We are doing this for you. We (laughs) hope you are happy about that <laughs> someone is sacrificing brain cells to save you oh god no it was so bad i i don't even have a soul to enough to, no, to explain how bad it was because it was, it was just boring yeah all they did was yeah, talk it, there wasn't yeah. there was nothing spooky they didn't even change like cinema there's not you couldn't even discuss the cinematography because it was just camera in the room there was no tonal shifts there was no palette changes there was no intri- there was not it was just like these bad actors talking to each other yeah. and a girl swearing at them yeah no they just use all their brain power for the cr- uh, for the opening credits yep and then nothing else was left. No. Sad. Very sad. 
honestly, I can't even point out things that I hated because I hated almost everything. So really, no, it was just plain boring. Yes. It's not like we can really point out where they failed. They failed since the beginning. So, uh, yeah, people, I think if Zoe doesn't have anything else <laughs> nope. to say. No, this is a very short episode because uh, we don't know what to say, really. It, it, was, it was just so such... boring. Like, at least a bad movie can be so bad it's funny and you can rip it apart for doing, like bad special effects or silly scenes or pointless scenes or you know using freaking nordic runes and calling them sumerian and you know but yeah. this was just boring because all they did was go talky 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 yeah. talky talky half an hour or so before they even got to karen then they brought her home and then she swore at them then they talked about stuff then they did the world's most pathetic exorcism then the end yeah. but it's an hour it and was... a half an hour and a half that's the problem and okay, okay, I lied. I can point out where they failed. Epic fail. I mean, I'm talking about an epic fail. They broke the one rule in cinematography. Show, don't tell. Well, <laughs> what can we say? People, if you want to join us, drop us a line uh, on our Twitter account, hat beneath underscore your or join us on our Facebook page, Beneath Your Skin. You can find us on uh, Pinecast and Spotify. Just look for Beneath Your Skin. And thank you for listening. And please, 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 don't watch this movie. <laughs> because it's so bad. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm just so exhausted. It's, I mean, it's a pleasure talking to you, Gaia. But this movie just, just put me in a sleep. And I just can't do it. So I've, I've just got to... For today, I'm just saying bye bye. I hope everyone is having a better time than we did watching this film.